So today it's part two of the FATD course, which is uh, divided in three parts. And uh, so the next part will be next Thursday. This is the outline. First, we have an introduction. And then we will see, um, previously we, we saw how we can resolve Maxwell equation in FDTD, but we didn't see how to introduce excitation. So here we will see how to do an excitation. Then we will, we will uh, see how to get the solution in frequency domain. After that, we talk about the contour pass FDTD or CP FDTD. Uh, perfect matched layers, and then thin Y formalism. This is what we saw last time. The central finite difference, this is really the basis. Um, it's not difficult to understand this concept, but it's uh, good to to try to, to write and um, resolve some uh, uh, partial differential equation using uh, this technique. At least it's good to do it one time. Then we have uh, uh, seen the discretization of Maxwell equation in time and space domain using the central finite differences and uh, an uniform Cartesian grid. And I presented the stability criterion, the numerical dispersion, and boundary conditions. We see a perfect electric conductor, perfect matched condu a perfect magnetic conductor and Muir's absorbing bonding condition of first order. Now I will talk about excitation. There's, there are different types of excitation. We can use a, a sinusoid, like, so like this, E of T is equal to sinus, sinus um, 2PF0T. And F0 is, is, a, is, a, is a frequency that we can choose. With this kind of excitation, we're going to excite just one frequency. This is this uh, type of excitation is not uh, um, uh, used a lot in FDTD because with FDTD, it's a time domain method. You can have a wide band frequency solution, but for some some problem, you may have to use this uh, type of excitation. So we have to discretize in order to introduce. The, uh, the excitation in FDTD, then we write E of N delta T, uh, sinus 2PF0, if not, N delta T. The Gaussian uh, excitation or Gaussian pulse, it's, uh, it's used a lot actually in FDTD because uh, uh, the Gaussian in, in time domain is also Gaussian in, in frequency. And if your pulse is uh, is narrow, if your T here is, is, is small, you will get a large Gaussian here, so you get a solution in wide frequency band. So we write the excitation like this, E of T equal A naught exponential minus T minus T naught square over T square. And that T square, we can, we can uh, uh, choose it like this. And the T naught, we can choose it like this. So the attenuation F max will be this attenuation at the maximum frequency. And the at, at, at uh, naught will be um, in time domain, the attenuation in time domain actually here. So usually we, we, we this is kind of value that, uh, opaque value that, uh, that are used, but you can also modify it depending of your, on your problem. So for example, if you use up on one and the 20 dB, uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, value has been used before. The other kind of excitation is a Gaussian modulated uh, by a sinusoid. So we have E of T equal A naught sinus 2 PF zero, if not T exponential minus T minus T naught square over t square. So it's the sinus that we see here, like previously, and we multiply by the Gaussian. So in the frequency dom in the time domain, it looks like a, a pulse, but uh, 
with a with a with a modulation modulated by a, a sinusoid, so you can recognize the frequency here. So depending on the frequency, so the the red one is eight gigahertz, and uh, the blue one here is four gigahertz. You can we can see. Uh, so it's a delta f. Sorry, it's not. It's a, so we can we can control the delta f, and uh, so depending on the delta f, we can control the bandwidth around the frequency f not. So solution we will get it around a certain frequency f not. Another type of uh, excitation is a Gaussian derived derived pulse. So it will be writing like this, E of t equal n naught, t minus t naught over delta t, exponential minus t minus t naught square over t square. We can choose t by using this relation. So depending on the f frequency max that we want we, we want to consider in our problem, at the attenuation at uh, maximum frequency. And this uh, t naught, uh, it depends on the, the parameter for, for in time domain. So depending on the attenuation of f max, minus 30 dB or minus 50 dB, 20 dB, you can see the difference in the shape uh, in the frequency domain. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, the, the excited the pulse in, uh, in time domain. So the idea of using the Gaussian derived pulse is for some problem, we don't want to excite uh, DC. And uh, so it is appropriate to use this type of uh, excitation for this problem. The relay uh, pulse uh, can be written like this, E of t equal A naught, uh, real of uh, exponential i alpha, and here you divide by i plus 2 p f naught t minus t naught over n, n power of n plus 1. And T naught can be controlled here, depending on the parameter in time domain here. Uh, this kind of uh, excitation uh, can be uh, uh, useful for uh, radar application. Uh, for example, uh, you, we want to send uh, uh, several sources, so several excitation. Uh, we have several sources, but we want to have um, the same phase difference uh, between the, the, the all the sources. So all the excitations. And the same phase difference for all frequency. We cannot do that with the Gaussian or the, the previous uh, excitation we saw, but we can do that with the real, real pulse. So the alpha we here will be the, the phase difference. So we can, for example, choose one source will have alpha equal 90, or another source alpha will be, we have another value. But the, the phase will be this, uh, will be always alpha for all frequencies. So let's see, for example, this example here. If you, we take alpha equals zero, we have the red curve, alpha equal uh, 90 degree, we have the blue curve. In frequency domain, it doesn't change because we, we only change the phase. So here the amplitude didn't change. We only change the phase of the uh, in time domain. And uh, if we plot then the, the phase, uh, in frequency the domain, so spectrum, we will see that the phase shift is always the same, always 90 degree, because we choose zero and 90. So as I said, this uh, has application for water. Uh, do you have any question? No. So we have seen the different kind of excitations that we can use. But we didn't see how we, we, we can introduce that in FDTD. So let's come back to Ampere's law. So I just added this one. So the current density, J source. And we, we already saw that the, the other part. And we already resolved this using FDTD. So we add this uh, current density. And uh, for example, if we consider a source to be in Z direction, uh, then we will have gz here. And it will be for this equation with ez. Um,
think I have to share before I go to here. I use a tablet and uh, yes, it's working. Now I have a better stele, so it should be better. So suppose we are we are in the axis here we have x and here we have z and we want to add a source in the cell. So the source will be the same position of electric field. Yeah, that's I. And let's suppose this point here is I, J, K. Um, so at the same position here we have EZ. Okay. So the current source, I should say it here. is at the same position then in the electric in the electric field on it So for this example, where we, we, we put the I with the EZ, uh, then the current density here will be J is I over delta X delta Y. Okay. And if we remember the of that of uh, EZ, we, have to, we use something like that. We have EZ and we have um, HY here. It's for Z and here Y for ZX. We have Z, and we have here HX, HX. That's the equation for the debt of EZ, and that's the GZ. So GZ, JZ is uh, only I of uh, delta X uh, and delta Y. And we resolve the same way we resolved the equation for update of EZ, except we have uh, JZ here. So that's the difference, we have the JZ here. So that JZ can can be uh, can have any any uh, uh, kind of excitation we want. So we can use a Gaussian, we can use sinusoid, or any any of those we have seen before here. So th this is kind of, this uh, some example. If we, for example, we have a microstrip line, and we want to excite that microstrip line. We use for each cell here in the in this area. This is ground plane. This is a microstrip. 
we're going to have the current sources here. So the EZ will have this uh, additional element that we have here for all of them. And from uh, using this, we can excite that microstrip line. If we want to send a plane wave, uh, we can use some uh, Bonnevi condition uh, for uh, um, periodic burning condition or infinite uh, burning condition. If the electric field is is in this direction, if you and we have peck and peck, this will this will be similar to uh, something infinite in this direction. So we will have like EZ in all of infinite plane here. And if we have PMC and PMC on this side, also the, the image will be an EZ in that direction. So this uh, allow to simulate a plane wave. So in FDTD, uh, there is a time loop where we calculate the electric field and magnetic field components at each time step. In the end, we get the result, the electric field and magnetic field components for different position. We want to, to, to save the field. Uh, in the, we get the result in uh, as a function of n, so as a function of time. So how to get the result in a frequency domain? Um, so we that's... Uh, this equation for the Fourier transform. So Fourier transform is a uh, equal here integration of zero to an infinite at exponential minus j two p f t et, and the discrete Fourier transform will have this shape. So we use the discrete Fourier transform, transform, and uh, we can uh, uh, so the n delta t is they are they are given. So we have the field for for different at each time step n, and uh, we can get the solution at any frequency f. So m delta f will be any frequency f. And the delta f is f max minus f min divided by here the number of um, uh, samples. And that number of samples actually we can it's arbitrary. We can we can choose choose it very large. That means when we get we got the solution in a, in time domain, we can uh, we have the solution for any frequency like a, a very like a getting result in continuous almost. So this uh, shows some example of analysis using the. The discrete Fourier transform to get the result in a, in a in frequency domain. Uh, here we have this is a paper uh, from this author in this journal. This is one of the first journal where FDTD is used for, with uh, microwave circuits. This is a micro supply. This is a filter, and this low pass filter we can get we can excite here and we can save the result of the electric field here in time domain. Then we use a Fourier transform uh, to get uh, uh, the solution in frequency domain. In this uh, curve here, we see the return loss actually S11, so the reflection coefficient. And we can see here the measurement and the FDT calculation, they agree very well. So this shows the, the how oh, FDTD is, is really accurate. So do we have any question? No. So I think we will do... A... Before continuing, we will do a small break of... Uh... So at 1.15, we come back at 1.15. Control pass FDTD or CPFDTD. This technique is to to have a better accuracy when we want to model a, um, a, um, 
a metallic object or a dielectric object uh, that has a equivalent boundary, like this one. Like in this uh, uh, example, this is uh, a spherical cavity. So everything here is metal and here it is air. So if we use a staircase, we will have something like this. Every, every, everything that will be uh, on the other side here will be electric field equal zero. And here electric field not zero. But this is not very accurate. And uh, if we want to have more accurate, we can decrease the, the meshing. But this is really time consuming. So another way to do to have a, uh, to increase accuracy without the decreasing the meshing is to um, uh, use this technique, so CPODTD. And the formalism here I present is the formalism proposed by Day and Mitra. And uh, so they use uh, Faraday's law, and in Faraday's law, they introduce here the area A. So the area here is, is uh, we can calculate. Um, so the, the the program it's it is possible to calculate the area. So suppose we know the area here, we know the area, we know etc. So all the uh, edge this is edge. So all this edge Z will use this value of uh, area. And uh, for the E X that we see here, uh, it doesn't change. So it's it's, it's like the classical LDT equation. So here the difference will be this one. So the challenge here is only coding in order to calculate what's the area. That's the only challenging. And uh, they found that they need to, to, depending on the area, they need to do some change. For example, if the area, uh, so this is, this is what we see, this is uh, some empirical analysis. So if the area of the smallest distorted cell is uh, uh, more than 1.5% of the undistorted cell area, uh, the, uh, the time step should be reduced by 50% based, uh, compared to the current limit, the current limit that we, see, we saw last time. Uh, that's the, the current limit is uh, limiting time to, to get uh, stability, so stability criterion. If the area of the smallest distorted cell is uh, more than 2.5% of the undistorted cells, the time step should be reduced by 30% of the current limit. If the ratio, ratio between the maximum length side of a cell and its area is, is less than 15, the time step should be reduced by 50% of the current limit. If it is less than 10, it should be reduced by 30%. So time sets need to be changed to be reduced in order to keep a stability. And I put here the reference, so the the, the, uh, the journal paper that present this technique. If you want to have more detail details about this technique, and actually I should say that Professor Mitra uh, has a, a commercial LDT code called. Uh, XFDTD, and which use this uh, technique, the CPFDTD. Uh, do you have any question for the CPFDTD? No. Okay. So let's uh, talk about perfect matched layers. So the the uh, mirror. Uh, has an absolute bonding condition that we, I presented uh, last time. Uh, this uh, ABC is based on the one-way wave approximation of the wave equation. And the one-way equation was originally proposed by Enquist and Majda. The problem of this technique is that the wave is absorbed without reflection only if it is plane and if it propagates perpendicularly to the boundary, which can be emitted a limitation for the treatment of many scratching problems. So before uh, presenting the PML, I will, uh, let me, yeah. I will uh, give it a proof 
of the one way with equation. So let's uh, stop this one here. I could share this one. Let's I'm going to give the, the proof of, of the one way with equation. Um, so the theory was uh, the, developed by Enquist and Mashda. For acoustic waves. I will start with a 2D wave equation. Delta square u over delta x square plus delta square u over delta y square minus one over c square Delta square u over delta t square over zero. And u here is a scalar field. And we define a, a partial differential operator. Yes, with the dx here square, dx is an operator of the first derivative with x plus dy square minus c. Sorry, ds square is first uh, second derivative, and d dt square. So the wave equation can be writing like this by using this operator. The wave equation is like this, gu equals zero. And uh, it can be shown that gu is um, G plus G minus U, uh, U, where we have G plus is DX minus DT over C square root of one minus S square. And S is an operator which is 
defined by dy over dt over c. So here there is no approximation. This is uh, exact. Uh, what uh, increase and match that has shown they have shown is g minus u equals zero. Uh, will represent propagation in one direction only. And the other direction, the other wave will not exist. series for one for square root of one minus s square and can say it's about one and uh, that's uh, using Taylor series and the first order approximation will give us this solution so if we do that then um, uh, g minus will be about dx minus dt over c and that's what we use uh, last time. That's what we used last time. And uh, so this one can be writing delta u over delta x minus o n over c delta u over delta t equals zero. So this one is a one way wave equation. It's a cremation actually. First order of cremation. This one is first order of cremation. It's not um if we we if we take this uh, this relation here and we we take for example a second order, then we have another solution with second order of cremation. We can have a like third order, etc. And um, uh, before the PML, they work a lot on the absorbing burning condition. And uh, the, most of the, 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 there were many paper on this subject. And uh, what they did is, is uh, increasing the order and, and, uh, and like this to have a, a better result. But still it was not good a result. Uh, the ABC was not good. It was not good. Uh, as I said, this one will work well if you have, for example, this is ABC. And you have a plane wave, which is normal to that ABC. You have no reflection. Nothing will go back. But if it's oblique, or, uh, and then it will have some reflection. So it doesn't work well for except for the plane wave at normal direction. Um, let me come back to the... Um, okay, I'm clear here. So as I said, so the, the first order one way with equation and that's what mu used this is what gave us um, u plus one that's zero j equal to u here n minus one It's a minus here, yeah, it's a minus here, one j plus c delta t minus delta over c delta t minus, uh, I think this one is plus here, and uh, here I should have multiply by two. plus one 
one and j plus u zero j nine minus one and then I have here plus two delta c delta t delta u zero g so plus u n one j that's n here so that's going to be uh, equal zero that's what we use at that boundary and we can also do the same for a max So let, let me write it for electric field. So we have, for example, electric field uh, for the Y or the Z one, the same, and plus one at this position, at uh, this position, shape zero JK. So in all this boundary, it will be E, Y, Z, N, uh, one, j k so here i don't have the minus so maybe i made a mistake maybe there is no minus here and here plus c delta t minus delta over c delta t plus delta e y z and plus one i j k minus e y z n zero j k and for this for the other boundary for i max IMAX, uh, it will be uh, something similar, but uh, you will see that in one of the code I will send. I don't know why I have some issue. So I can write it here, so I max. It's E, Y, Z at N plus one. I max, J, K. Here we have E, Y, Z, N, I max minus one, J, K plus C delta T minus delta over C delta T plus delta. And here we have and plus one I minus minus one J K minus E, Y, Z, plus one, I max, J, K. Um, it's 
I think it's Ng as well. Okay, you, you can check. You can check that with the, with the code that we share. So let's continue. As I said, so before PML, there was a lot of work on the absorbing point recognition uh, using higher order, and uh, and there's many people working on this subject. And then came the perfect matched layers proposed by Beranger uh, in 1990. Yeah, 1996. So he proposed that in 1996, and uh, the, the PML is actually really efficient. And uh, it was proposed for LDTD, and then it was it, it was is used in for for other uh, in in other field in in another in using other domain in other um, technique, and also uh, in acoustics. So PML is 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 used a lot. So. Uh, to explain the PML, we start with a simple problem, a 2D problem. For example, the, the TEZ. And, uh, for, so for TEZ, we have e, only EWAX, e, EX, EY, and HZ. So PML is perfect matched layers. So we have many layers. It's not a absorbing boundary condition like we had before. It's not just the boundary. We need to add um, layers. So here, this is a vacuum, or this is uh, where we have our structure, and uh, then we have the, the the PML. So in the PML, we write the equations because we have only for the TEZ we have only EX, EY, and HZ. So for Maxwell equation will be that simple. It will be as simple. We added this term, which is sigma star. So this is a, a, a magnetic conductivity. It's it's used only for the. We will we will see why it's only for the uh, for the uh, for the numerical uh, 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 um, in order to have um, absorption of the wave and also matching. So it's it's not something necessarily real. It's uh, it's used in order to to make this PML absorbing and also to make it matched at this at, at this interface here. So we will see that the con the electric conductivity and epsilon zero magnetic conductivity and mu zero they are, they have to be related uh, by this equation. We will uh, demonstrate this equation. Here also, what we do is we split HZ in two time in two two part. So HZ become HZX plus HZY, and here instead of having one equation, we have two. We split in two. So the one with EX is with X is this one. The other one with Y is this one. So here we have HZX. HZX and here we have EY. So here because we we do the derivation with the, uh, X, so we keep this one HZX. We call this one HZX. And uh, here we have theta Y. So that's HZY. And uh, the the conductivity also we divide in two. So sigma Y and sigma X and sigma X star and sigma Y star. In order to show how this uh, this medium uh, interact with the uh, an H-matic wave, we consider here a plane wave. 
So the plane wave can be written like this, the x equal minus e0 sine uh, phi exponential uh, i, i here is a complex uh, number, uh, omega t minus alpha x minus beta y. So alpha and beta will characterize rotation constant in the x and y direction. And so the phi here is the angle uh, of inclination of the plane wave. And that's the, the, the arrow here show the direction of propagation. Uh, no, no, sorry. Um, this one shows the direction of propagation, I'm sorry. No, the phi here is show the polarization, sorry. We have EY and EZ, and phi here show the polarization polarization of the electric field, sorry. And here we have K, rotation constant, and we have the angle of the plane wave is is, a fix, is given by U. So depending on alpha and beta. So the, uh, EX and EY, the only difference will be here, sinus P and cosinus P, minus sinus P and cosinus P. And here HZX0, HZY0, which we have to find. If we use the plane wave, uh, this question that you express the plane wave, we put that in the modified Maxwell equation. We're going to have these four equations. And this four equation can give us the condition on alpha, beta, HZX0, and HZY0. So this equation is obtained by um try to remember if you divide this by this then you you will you remove let's just let's zero yeah. but here you have only by data you don't have alpha um, yeah, you replace what we do actually, you replace HZX0 here. You can replace from within this using these two equation, you will replace them here. And by using that, by doing that, you're gonna have this to, uh, this equation. So you can do it for for the two this two equation. And you will have you are gonna have this two equation, and then we can do this over this, and this gives us a relation of beta over alpha, and uh, the equation becomes sinus phi over cosinus phi, one minus i sigma y over epsilon naught omega, and here i sigma x over uh, epsilon naught omega. And if, if we uh, use this equation and we replace, we can also resolve alpha. So alpha become square root of epsilon zero mu zero. And here we have uh, G. G is omega x cosinus square alpha uh, uh, phi plus omega y sinus, uh, actually it's W, so no, it's not the same, it's not this omega, W x and here W y. In Wx and Wy, they are, they are given by this formula here. And here we have uh, 1 minus i uh, delta x over epsilon 0 omega cosinus phi. If, if we didn't have this, uh, uh, which one? Well, so let's, let's come back here. So the plane wave is i omega t minus i omega alpha x so we have only the we have only the i and uh, the alpha here uh, if it is complex you multiply by the complex here we will have a negative number so let's come back here so this part here the one will give us only phase by a phase change. 
but that one will will will, will give us an amplitude change. That one. And uh, the other thing is this uh, uh, g. If g equal one, then we have the same. The behavior, the impedance is the same as actually in the next slide when you calculate the impedance. But then the impedance will be the same as the impedance of vacuum. So how to to get that? We need to have w x and w y equal to one, and then we can we get one. So if we write also h z x zero h z y zero by using the four previous equations, so we have four equation and four unknown. So we resolve that we got h z x zero h z y zero. So we have h zero which is summation of both, and if we do h zero over a zero, we got the 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 impedance. So the entrancing impedance of the medium. And we can see here, this is this one is interesting impedance of the vacuum. And we have here a J. So if G here is equal to one, then we have the same interesting impedance of uh, than the vacuum. If we write now the plane wave, it will have this form with, which is, this one is, is, uh, is normal. It's like a normal plane wave. And this one show an amplitude um, uh, decreasing. And amplitude decreasing in x direction, amplitude decreasing in y direction. So if we have um, sigma x over epsilon zero equals x sigma star over mu zero, then the omega uh, uh, w x will be equal to one. And the same thing for this one it will be equal to one. Then we will, it means we will have the same impedance. So if we use this condition, sigma over epsilon zero equals sigma star over mu zero. The impedance will be z. Then we will we we we, we will have a, at the interface we'll have no reflection. So at this interface, you imagine a plane wave at any angle. The plane wave can be normal, can be inclined like this, oblique. We'll have no reflection at this interface. The wave will continue. And when it continue in the PML uh, uh, medium. It will, uh, it will, it will, the amplitude will decrease. So it look, look, looks like it's uh, absorbed. So the amplitude decreases, and then in the end, here we have perfect conductor. So the boundary here, here is perfect conductor. So the wave is reflected. The amplitude decreases again. If we choose uh, the, the electric conductivity uh, and magnetic conductivity well, and we have enough layers. The, the wave that will come here will be very small. So we can control that by controlling the number of layers and co controlling the parameters. So that's the principle of the perfect metric layer. So this is a reflection coefficient at the interface. As I say, it's zero. Um, now, if we have a so we have a, 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 a this two D problem. We said we we we're gonna use. I come back to the question. We say we're gonna use um, this one, sigma y, sigma x, sigma and sigma y x star and sigma y star. If, if we look at uh, this kind of problem, you see the computational volume. We have, for example, wave sources, and the wave can come from any direction. For this boundary here, for this PML, uh, we we can use only uh, sigma y. That's enough. Okay, so uh, sigma y it's enough. Like this one, we can use sigma x and sigma x star. That's enough. We don't need uh, the other one because for for any angle, we, sigma x will will uh, introduce the decrease of the wave. But for this edge, we need both of them. We need both of this ones because the wave can come from here or can come from here, so we need both of them. So this shows the 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 wave after it's reflected inside the PML and come back. We will get this kind of reflection. We can also use a certain distribution of the conductivity. 
instead of make, making the conductivity the same, the same value for each layer, for, for, for all the cells here, we can also do use certain variation of the conductivity. Yeah, this is an example of this variation actually has been used and it has been for to be efficient. For this uh, kind of variation, this gives a uh, reflection coefficient. Now it is shown how how this is implemented in FDTD. Uh, for the for we have in the PML we have here the EY, EX, uh, HZX, HZY. So HZX, HZY, it's only inside PML. Outside here, it's H -H -H -Z. So that's the difference. It will, will need a sigma x, uh, and we need to split H Z x and Z y, H Z x and Z y. For H Z x, we need here sigma x star, and uh, for H Z y. Uh, the same, the same thing, the same thing, but we, we're going to have sigma y star. If we have the interface, if we are here at the interface, for example, for this one, then for one side, we use a splitted one, and for the other side, we use the unsplit one. So that's at interface. We're going to have here hzx plus hzy, and here only hz. Let's continue with the TMZ case. In the TMZ case, uh, the, we have only three components, EZ, HX, and HY. In the same way, EZ here is split in two. So EZX, EZY, uh, and what we see here, EZX, EZY, etc. And we have also electric conductivity and magnetic conductivity. If we have a 3D PML, so this one TMZ, the other one was TEZ. For TMZ, we have split the EZ. For TEZ, we have split HZ. But now for 3D, we're going to split all the, the, the electric component and magnetic component. So H, uh, EX is split in EXY and EXZ. And the same thing for all of the other one. HZ is split, uh, etc. HY, etc. So instead of having six uh, partial differential equation, we have uh, uh, 12 partial differential equation. That's a PML for uh, 3D problem. As we have seen before, uh, depending on the on the edges or corner or the uh, the faces, uh, we don't need to use all the sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. For example, in this uh, case here, we need only sigma y and sigma y star. And uh, here it's sigma x and here is sigma z. If we are at this corner, we need sigma y and sigma x. But if, if we are really at this uh, edges here, we need, we need all of them. So in practice, uh, 10 PML is 10 uh, layers of, for the PML are uh, good. Um, and the reflection coefficient is acceptable when it is less than 10 minus 3. So, yeah. So I have finished with the, the PML. Do you have any question? No, so let's let's continue. So thin Y formulas, thin Y formulas is also a subcell uh, problem, like with the, the CPFDTD. This is used if we want to modelize uh, um, a metallic wire, but we don't want to mesh it. So let's continue. Next slide. So suppose you have a metallic wire, it is, but it is this metallic wire is very thin compared to the the, the other structures that you, you are simulating. 
and you if you start to make, to change the meshing just because of the metallic wire, then the simulation will be really time consuming. So there is a, a technique, a subcell technique, which was proposed by Holland, and uh, and that's his formalism that we're going to present now. So let's suppose we have an electric, uh, we have a, a metallic wire that is inside a cell. And uh, the position of the metallic wire is given by this delta X and delta Y. Alpha and beta, they are the ratio between delta X and uh, the grid delta X and delta Y, which are the uh, space mesh. And so the metallic wire can, have, can be at any position. And it can continue in the Z direction. We can we can control. We can make a define a certain length of the the of the metallic metallic wire. So the way it is it is implemented here, it will be for one cell. But we can do for the next cell uh, in the Z direction. We start with a static solution. So a static solution, so this is a wire. See here the wire. And uh, we have I at this position, K plus half. We have charge at the position K and charge at position K plus one. The diameter is 2A, A is a radius. And delta Z, so it's the it's a, it's a meshing in the Z direction. So the electric field has a function, uh, has electric field in R, um, as a function of the radius is a Q over 2PR, L epsilon zero, epsilon R. And H phi is I over 2PR. Maxwell equation in cell nivel coordinates, they can be writing like this, uh, delta ER over delta Z minus delta EZ over delta R, R equal minus uh, mu naught delta h phi over delta t. And one over r, uh, delta r h h phi over delta z minus delta h z over delta phi. E naught, uh, epsilon naught, epsilon r, delta e r over delta t. I think... Uh... So if we if we use a static solution and we introduce static solution in Maxwell equation here, we're gonna have this solution. We're gonna have this. And now if we integrate in R the first equation, and we know that actually there is no variation of HZ uh, has a function of phi. So delta HZ delta over delta phi equals zero. Uh, from that we can we can find um, uh, e z over uh, as a function of r. So here we have mu naught over two p two pi uh, ln r over a delta i over delta t plus c square over epsilon r delta q over delta z. And the second equation is this one. So because this is equal zero, so that means that this one equals zero. We can we can uh, calculate the average of EZ, and the average of EZ will be then the average of this value, and the average of this value can be calculated using this expression. And that uh, L actually is equivalent to an inductance. Is um, so the average one. So the, the solution is, is given by this formula. And uh, based on empirical values, we need to change if uh, the, depending on the diameter. So the, here A is the radius. So if A over delta is smaller than 0 0.3, then we have to change a little here. And if it's more than 0 0.5, then we have to change a little the formula. 
So based on that, using these two equations, so here we have equation, derivation with time, derivation with z, we can use finite difference, and the same thing for this one. So for, for the two the two equations here, we resolve the current and the charge. I think here is something is, is, is mistake. Sorry. So here is Z and here is T. So here we resolve the, the derivation of Q with T, and here we have derivation of I with T. So this equation will give us the update of I, and this equation will give us update of Q. And that's what we see here actually. So delta Q over delta T. So that's what that's what we want here. And uh, sorry, here it should be minus or half. Here it should be minus half. So we we have resolved the uh, I Z uh, using this equation, and we resolve also the charge. So at each each time step, we can resolve the the, the current and the charge. The I and H uh, components they are calculated at the same position at the same time. It's not difficult to show that. And the charge and the electric field component, they are calculated at the same position and the same time. So now the question is how we, we will put this uh, uh, average here. We just uh, use uh, uh, this interpolation. So you know, this uh, we use a ratio actually, so alpha and uh, beta, so the average, if we know the EZ here, the EZ here, EZ here, and EZ here, the average will be calculated by using this formula here. So that means we can update I, Z, because we know what's the electric field using an FDTD. And uh, we can update the charge because we know what's the, the current before and also we, the, the current, the charge before. And uh, then the current sources, the current sources in the different position. So at, uh, for the different position in black, we see the different point for the EZ, we're gonna use uh, this relation. So the GZ at this position will be given by this, one minus alpha multiplied by one minus beta, IZ, and IZ is resolved by the pre previous equation. Uh, the same thing for the, for the pre, uh, for each one. So we're going to have uh, GZ for all of them here. And uh, I didn't show here, but the the GZ the GZ, uh, the GZ is uh, is introduced by using this technique. That's G, GZ here. And that's what we see. So for, for this point, for this different point, we have to add a JZ. So that's uh, that's all I think for the Holland thin wire formalism. Uh, if we want to introduce a voltage and a resistor in the wire, we just start with uh, this Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff equation um, using Kirchhoff law. So we have R, I, Z here plus LM delta Z um, over delta I, I, Z over delta T plus LM V squared delta Q. And we have here the voltage. So we resolve this. Uh, what will change is uh, update of I, Z will be different. We have the resistor and we have the voltage V uh, here and also uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's all for for today. It is the last slide. Do we have any question? No, no question. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, see you again uh, on Thursday.
for the last class. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.